everyone. We're going to do Trelly's mask today. And if I sound a little different, it's because I have opened the door and the windows in my studio because it's an absolutely beautiful day. So if you get a little bit of um, atmospheric noise, it's because I got the windows open because I really just wanted to enjoy the day. But anyway, Trelly's mask is where we're at. Go to pattern-collections.com to find the pattern and um, there is no such thing as an app it's just picture on my phone from the website so this one's going to be interesting to do I'm just gonna do I'm not gonna do like a fancy thing I'm just gonna do a square um, I'm gonna do it in I guess orange um, first thing you do is you make a uh, square grid in pencil you can see the the green lines are pencil okay and then step number one we're gonna make this sort of bracket shape okay and we're gonna do that all along and then the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make this shape here so we're going to do like that and then coming from the tip of here right and then we're going to turn it around basically and do it the same way here does that make sense? I hope that makes sense and then in these spaces we're going to do this shape, this this filling in with the lines, sort of looks like a whale tail. And at this point, you can uh, put in the eyes for the mask and fill this in here, and then erase all your other lines. Okay, and then it looks like that, and you can do some shading. So that's what we're going to do. It is a little loud. Let me go grab and close the door. It was a little bit too loud. Oh well. I tried. Leave the windows open though. Alright, let's see. Turn on my lights so you guys can see what's going on. I'm a little bit zoomed in. I'm not too sure why I'm so zoomed in. And then I'm going to do myself a little border. You can use a straight edge if you want. I don't know why I didn't, but I didn't. I'm going to do like I did last time and make a nine square. that I think maybe I didn't um, this time because I was I knew I was going to erase everything but I erased everything last time too I don't know make it more square all right breaking out the straight edge feeling feeling more straight edgy Making myself a little tic-tac-toe. There we go. That's better. Straight. Straight-ish. Okay. And then I want to make that in half. Is a little bit too big. Oh, now the neighbors are vacuuming. See, I just can't have the windows open. Can't have the windows open and record at the same time. But you know what? I'm just going to live with it because I want the fresh air. 
Okay, so now we're going to make here that bracket type shape. And it's not my easiest shape. So it's almost easier for me to go like this. And just do half of it to start. You do what you need to do in order to make the shape. However, it's easiest for you to make the shape. I find this shape to be a challenging shape. So I'm going to do it like this. You were off screen. I'm sorry. You didn't see some of that. I'm closer than I think. For some reason, I don't know why I'm all zoomed in like that. I thought I'd zoomed out, but apparently I didn't zoom out enough. Okay, so I did all of one side first. And then I'm going to tackle the other side because it's not the same shape. It's opposite. And that's hard for me to get my wrap my head around. So and I should get them where they're touching. Oh, that was wrong direction. See, I have a hard time with this shape. It needs to come down and up. What? Can I go this way? Oh, I can go this way. Ah, that's the shape I like to make. I just needed to turn my paper upside down. Silly me. Oh, nope, done it wrong again. I have a hard time with this shape. I just do. I don't know why. Once I get going, I'm okay. But I have a heck of a time with this shape. So it's down and over. Down and over, down and over, down and over. Why I have a hard time with this shape, I don't rightly know. But it's just, it's my nemesis shape. It just is. Okay. And then we draw this line. So we're going to draw this line. And this line this line and this line and then I can finish off the box this way okay so far so good some of them are a little wonky, that one. Most especially that one. That one's really bad. Okay, now. I'm going to make this shape here. I'm going to make a triangle here. And then I'm going to skip that shape. Okay, where else am I making that triangle then? What the heck? Okay, this is this this is taking some thought. Take take your time. Think about what you're doing. So this one is this one, and then this one, and this one. Okay. Then next it goes here. So then we skip this. Don't put it here. We want it here. And it's going to go this way. And then skip one. And then go this way. Yes. And skip one and then that should go all the way down to the bottom 
Okay, so then in this row, it goes here and here. And in this row, it goes here and here. So far, so good. Now we need to turn the whole thing upside down. We need to go in the opposite spot. So it's still in this row, but in the opposite spot. We need to go this way and this way and half of that and half of that. And then in this row is this way. And this way, and half of that, and half of that. That's it. And then it would be here also. This way, this way, and half of that, and half of that. Okay. Did I get them right? I think I did. I think I'm happy with that. Now we do our diagonals and it's on this spot here. Okay, and then it's on this one. You could slow down, you could take your time. I go fairly fast. I could make it closer together like I did this one. I want that not so big. I want that over here. But we're going to color this spot in anyways. So it's okay. I can adjust that. It might almost be easier to color those in first before I do these stripies. They had us doing the stripies first. But I'm thinking I want to color in those triangles first. I'm going to switch over to my bigger pen. I'm going to color in this shape. This pen has almost had it. I think I may need to switch over to a different big pen. See if I have another big pen. A number eight. Switch to a more fresh. Oh, look how much better that is when it's a fresh pen. Let 
really should be erasing my pencil. I'm going to do that before I get any further. So the neighbor's vacuuming is done. They vacuum every single day. There's way more vacuuming than I do, but they have a daughter with some sort of immune disorder and they need to keep their home very clean. So, must be right around noon, yep. She's, she's pretty consistent, the neighbor, on what time she vacuums. She vacuums right around noon every single day. With this, you can kind of fix some of your mistakes with your line work. Not all of them. Some of them are just too wonky for me to fix, but I can at least adjust this angle here. Like I did with this one made that one because I'd made that stripe a little too small. I just extended this spot here. Now remember I need you guys to remember, especially if you're new here to my channel, I want to thank you for joining us here. But remember, I am not necessarily teaching you how to draw this pattern. What I am doing is I'm letting you come along with me as I learn how to draw this pattern. And that is two totally different things. There are some absolutely brilliant teachers of patterns on YouTube. Um, Melinda Barlow is one of the best, but she is a teacher. That's what she's doing. She's on purpose teaching. She has thought about her lesson. She has um, figured out samples she has perfected the pattern that she's going to present and so she knows the best ways to do something I 99% of the time have not ever drawn the pattern that I'm about to do ever before and so I am you're seeing me learn it live. Well, not live, live, but in real time. And that's the difference between me and a lot of the other pattern YouTube artists is that they have thought about it. They've planned it. They've, um, some of them have absolutely stunning artwork um, but they are some of them aren't teachers at all some of them are just demonstrators of their art and they just you know do in fast forward or in um, with music over the top and so forth that you're just watching them draw and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and you learn from it um, 
but it's different than what I do. And, and some people will sometimes complain about what I'm doing and that it, that I seem to be distracted or disorganized. Well, I am. I absolutely am. I can, I can tell you that right now because all I'm doing is learning this pattern and I'm bringing you guys along with me. Decided I, I got a little carried away with my, my thick pen and I want a little bit thinner line right there. So I'm just going to fix it. And since I know that that's going to be an issue, I'm going to fill this in with my thinner to start with. Because I know if I try to get my fat one in there, I'm just going to botch up that corner that I don't want to botch up. So fill that in. And then I'll come back with my bigger pen. But like I said, that's that's the difference between me and everybody else. I also choose not to add extra advertising to my YouTube channel. Um, I don't push uh, links or merchandise. Um, I have it. I, I do have it and it's there and it's you can do what you want with it but you know I don't push it because this isn't really YouTube isn't really a source of income for me the point is here for me to learn how to do these patterns and I was doing them every single day and you guys if you guys those who have been with me for a while no, I was doing it every single day. I cannot keep up that pace. I can't do 365 drawings a year or more because I would do Inktober as well. So in October I was doing another 30 drawings. So about 400 drawings a year. I just couldn't keep up that pace anymore. I just, I got burnt out. So now I'm down to three times a week, which is seems to be just a good schedule for me. I could become one of those YouTubers that does a lot of advertising, pushes the, you know the the ad window, and I don't begrudge those who do because it it can be a, a lucrative thing. But I choose not to um, because I'm not teaching. I think if I spent more time and I edited and I thought about more what I was drawing and I did a better job of making sure I didn't go off the page and you know all that stuff. If I was more professional about it. Um, Maybe I would, and there may be a, come a day where I decide that, you know, I need the extra money or whatever, but right now, I choose not to. Okay, I don't really much care for the fact that, that this one is, is a different density than the other ones, I'm not, not overly happy with that but it is what it is now I can come back in here and do all the rest of my stripes This should be it's just like that. So this is the top of the next one down. So it should angle with this. Like 
that, right? All right, it should. Okay, so then I should do this one. And I should do this one. And then I'm going to turn it so that it's easier for me to draw because this angle is a better angle than going sideways. Always turn your paper. Those are some sort of tips I can give you. That's That I guess is teaching. Always turn your paper to make it more simple for you and don't hurt your hand or your wrist by going an odd angle. If it looks strange on camera, well then too bad it looks strange on camera, but it's always going to be at whatever angle is easiest for me to draw without hurting myself. I've watched some YouTube artists who are very careful to put their their up, up, and that the, it's always facing you, the viewer. Um, and then they really struggle to get their hand in a spot where they can draw what they need to draw or paint what they need to paint. And that just looks so awkward to me. And it makes me cringe when I, oh, that, their hand has got to hurt at the end of a, a painting session or drawing session because of the weird way that they have to hold their hand in order to not block the view of the camera while still... Um, keeping their page in one spot so much easier to just turn your work especially when you're doing patterns like this because they're non-representational so they're easy to turn your work because you're not you don't have automatically in your head that it has to be this way is the right side round if I stop right here and don't put those eyes and make them into masks, there's something wrong right there. Something's missing. I need, I need dark right there. But if I don't make those into masks, to me they look more like whale tails. And I could leave this just like that, and it's perfectly fine. It's beautiful as a pattern. Um, but because it's called Telly's Mask, I think I'm going to add the mask. But I, I'm really struggling to do that because I'm almost not wanting to. I'm really not wanting to. I don't think I will. So I'm going to do Telly's mask, Trelly's mask without the mask because I really don't want it to look like something. Does that make sense? I want it to be abstract. So I'm going to leave it like this. I am going to shade. I think I'm going to shade here. Shade here and here. But I'm not going to put the eyes on.
I think I will shade just this side of this shape. This is a good size stump. I might use the bigger one up here. Oops, I missed a spot. Were you guys yelling at me? Quite often, somebody else says that they were yelling at me. You missed a spot. I don't mind. These are just practice pages. I don't mind. But it's a good way to catalog different patterns. You know, at the end of my videos, I take a picture of each pattern. I've done a really poor job of posting them on my Draw Tangles Facebook page. Really, really poor job. I need to I need to catch up. I do have them all in an album. So it's easy to just open that album and say, you know, I like this pattern, and then I can find it because I've put the name. So I've made that shape like that with a little bit of shading and now I'm going to do my favorite white from the other side. And I'm probably going to try to smudge that. Which I don't usually do. Maybe I will try. Reminds me of the whales we saw when we were on vacation. Something that I'm doing that you probably don't notice is that <clears throat> I'm constantly turning my pencil so that as the as the white kind of mushes and gets flat from where I'm coloring, I turn it to get a, another sharp edge. But you probably can't see that because it happens every time I stop and turn my pick up my pencil. If you notice the name there, it disappears because I turn my pencil. I'm constantly rotating it. Okay, now, question is, do I want to do something, I want some kind of other color in the back, back there. I think I want a turquoise blue. 
bluey green. Coloring always takes longer than the drawing. So if you're wondering about that, yes, coloring always takes longer than drawing. Shading usually takes longer than the drawing. How's that? I like that. I like that a lot. I almost feel like I want these to be a different color though than that. I'm wondering if I want to do a orange to make that a little bit different color than the other rest of the paper. It blends in with that dark that I put there, but it gives it a something else. Yeah. And I'm just pushing a little bit harder on this side than toward the middle. Make it a little darker. Between that and the pencil that's already there that I've already smudged gives it a nice dark orange kind of a color. I like that. That's better. It needed something. I don't know. wasn't sure what, but that's better. All right, so now I can put my name to it. And I can give it its name, which is Trelly's Mask. I'm put it down here. T R E L L Y S A S Q U E. All right. So now I'm done. Zoom in on that. Oop! Too far. There we go. That looks good. I like it. I'm almost thinking that it needs a little bit more of that green, but I don't want to overdo. But I almost feel like I want, maybe I'll put a little wash of, of, of a blue green color pen instead. Ah, that's what it needed. Needed a little something else. And I'm glad I didn't go all the way to the edge because that gives it a little bit of a highlight where I can put a snitch of a brighter color. 
Eh, I wasn't done. It knew I wasn't done, didn't it? Back to my Prismacolors. This is um, Chartreuse. Needed a little something else. Make it sort of mermaidy. Now it's got more of a mermaid sort of vibe, doesn't it? Bit of chartreuse in there. But the orange still peeks through. So that's how it's different than drawing on a on a white piece of paper. When you draw on a colored piece of paper, the color still shows through even though you're putting other colors on top. And it gives it a an orangey overtone to all of it, even if you've put blues and greens and other colors on top. I have been working more on my color theory and I really need to make myself a nice color wheel. Which I have not done yet. There we go. Oh yes! That's what it needed. It needed some chartreuse. Life can't get any better without adding some chartreuse to it, right? Look at there. Okay, I am now super happy with that. I hope you guys had a great day. Hope you're enjoying my drawings. Um, we will be back tomorrow with Try Spin, which I don't remember what that was because I picked it a week ago, but anyway, Try Spin is next, and then following week is Rausk, R-A-U-S-C, Rangoli Border, and Rosella, and those ones will be coming out on, uh, Easter week, um, Palm Sundays uh, just before uh, Rousk, and then um, they'll be Good Friday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, uh, Easter, Passover. It's all good. It's all happening coming up. So um, I hope you guys have a really great day. Um, go out and do something nice for someone today. Make the world a better place, and I will see you on the next video. You guys have a really awesome day. I plan on doing one more video and then I'm going to just enjoy the rest of this beautiful spring day. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.